The Flow on Talk North. I'm not a lockside Rick Flamo. He is coming to you from Chicago. Brandon is producing all the way in Minneapolis, and I am in Lauderdale, Minnesota, the home of the Flow Podcast. It is Thursday, 726, 2018. It is a Thursday. Rick, a very exciting show after a nice little vacation last week. Sorry about that, folks. But this week we're coming back. We got another info preview, but Rick, we're talking about a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of things are happening. Uh, NFL season is really close to being started. I saw something that said um, this past Sunday was the last Sunday we're going to have without football until <sighs> February. So, uh, good. so that's cool. Um, yeah, MLB is in full swing. we got to talk about what's going on and now that the second half is underway. Some deals have shaken down in the NBA, NFL, mm-hmm. and NHL. We're going to cover all that. Plus, we got Millennial Probs and One Thought. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, because I think the Hall of Fame game for the NFL is this weekend, which is insane. But it's crazy. Bears are playing in it, too. Um, who are they? Do you know who they play? No clue. Okay, well, we'll find out then. Um, hashtag Millennial Probs, great segment. Uh, do you want me to go first, Rick? Can I go yeah, first? Yeah, lead off. I'm, I'm interested. In what okay, this... so, so the boys, us, we're going, uh, it's wedding season. We're going to a wedding this weekend. And so I was thinking about, God, I mean, I've just seen the same captions. We're talking social media here, folks. Seen the same captions all the time for these posts like, oh, congrats to Stacy and Adam, the the lovely couple, or you got a date. It's like the wedding and me season. You've seen all of them before. And so, and then this also got me thinking, you have the boat pictures in summer, all this. And it's just so... It's so typical all the time. And so can we, we need to think of a different type of caption to do for this wedding this weekend. We should almost chirp the couple in in some regard because I don't want to be like, congrats to Kyle and Bridget, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's pretty basic. Um, Well, so captions are, we've talked about this before. They're almost more important than the picture you're posting because a good caption can make the post that much cooler and it can generate that many more likes for you. So it's really important. Plus, see, I was going to, what my millennial problem originally was, it was going to be um, caption credit. Like if your buddy gives Mm -hmm. you a good caption, do you have to credit him or her for that? So You almost uh, should. You're like an author at that point. You're like a very skilled person. Because, you know, you give photo creds to people if they take the photo mm-hmm. sometimes. you got to give caption creds, too. Uh, yeah, we, I don't know. See, I, I didn't post anything about my latest trip uh, to Wrigley Field because I looked at my Instagram, and two of my last three Instagram posts were me at Wrigley Field. So Yeah, so you can't go there. You can't lot, go there at all. A lot going on there. Yeah, that's um, an oversaturation of the feed if you go three for four all at the Cubbies. So, but... But at the wedding, we got to figure something out because you got to post about the wedding. Exactly. And in, in Loki, Rick, the hotel is sold out. So we just got a oh. made some calls yesterday. So I texted some of the boys and they're like, you know what? Let's just sip some suds and we'll figure it out. So wow. didn't mean to break break that news on the podcast. But yeah, just the caption. It's I think just social media and Twitter and Instagram. It's been around for so long that now we're getting to this point where It's aged so much. We've seen the same captions how many times. So it's hard to it's hard to be original now on social media. And to your point, when you can, when you do have that good caption, it's like, whoa, this person's like talented. People take pride and become viral due to good Twitter or good captions. And that's just kind of an interesting development in twenty eighteen. Yeah. It's all about the uh, it's all about the posts. Okay, Pima, what's yours, man? What's up? Uh, well, there's a thing going around Twitter right now uh, that people believe the Earth is flat. Heard yes. this. We uh, we have not um, changed our <laughs> mindset in the last 2,000 years <laughs> that the Earth is round. Uh, they believe that the Earth is flat yet again, and that is a problem. But it just... It is. It, this is a perfect millennial problem because there is a good following of people that actually have a platform to say the Earth is flat when... We clearly know it is not, um, and that the entire universe um, it cannot be flat. Uh, so, with that being said, I think that that is just typical 2018 going on right there, that people now have a reason to complain that the Earth is flat. And what are the, whether it be this or something else, 
that's just where we're at right now. This- yeah, you're just trying to get attention. It's I'm pretty sure Kyrie Kyrie Irving is an Earth is flat guy. There's a couple of NBA guys that yeah, are Earth is flat uh, people. And, and I don't know just, how serious they are about this, um, but it gives them a platform to be idiotic. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 obviously not true, and it's just kind of ignorant. And it's also, I think it is just kind of an attention grab. Like, it's a headliner. You know, you'll get a little update on your phone if Kyrie Irving said the earth is flat. Oh, look at this Twitter feed. And then it's just a bunch of people either being, trying to be funny, agreeing with him, or just being... Yeah, it's of the mindset of you're an idiot, and so yeah, I yeah, Earth is flat, people. I got no patience with those people. It's yeah. it's. I don't, don't know what they do in this world. But no, yeah, just we kind of type on Twitter. Like, Earth is flat. Uh, you'll know. you'll be very entertained. I feel like we're kind of old men on our stoop outside our door, just complaining about people. But you know what? This one is worth. This one is worth. Yeah, I just can't do those people. I can't at all. It drives me nuts. Yeah, That's a good one. Bad. I like this one. And yeah, I have a Twitter thing for our one thought later that is actually of concern to Minnesota sports fans. I'm not. Oh, okay. It's troublesome. Sorry, I was taking taking a pull of coffee there. Um, That's Millennial Problems. Hashtag Millennial Problems. Tweet at us with your Millennial Problems. Mine is at Zapatime2. Rick, Nemo at Pimo. Pimo. Nemo Pimo. Um, let's go to football. So we've been doing the rundown of NFL divisions this week, we have a good one. I really like this division. I'm really excited to talk about this. The AFC North, a division that has actually turned over quite a bit the last couple of years. You got the Steelers, who were 13-3 and three last year. The Ravens, who were 9-7. and seven. The Bengals, who reversed that record, 7-9. and nine. And then the Browns with the big old zero burger, a 16-game losing streak coming off of last year. Yeah, it's rough. Got some stats about the people, and we'll go down them one at a time. Rick, the Steelers won this division handedly last year. I would envision them doing the same this year. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, they're a minus 260 to win the division um, on oh, oddshark.com. Wow. So Those they got that going odds. for them. Cleveland, plus 1,400 to win the division. Oh Not going to happen. Cincinnati, plus 1,100. Baltimore comes in second place with plus 470. You look at the Steelers. Okay. They should have beat the Patriots in that playoff game. They um, really remember should have. They got robbed of that touchdown not counting or the catch not counting late in the game to the tight end. Um, and then, you know, Tom Brady doing his thing in the final two minutes. Steelers, uh, they have Le'Veon Bell holding out. He's going to be doing this, especially with Todd Gurley signing the new big deal. He's like, oh, now you guys think I'm crazy for for wanting all this money when Todd Gurley gets the most guaranteed money ever by a running back. Uh, But but the Steelers, I mean, you have Antonio Brown, best wide receiver in the NFL. Ben Roethlisberger's a a concern, right, because he's old, he's had injuries. How is he going to play this year? Yeah, I mean, they were 7-1 and one at Heinz last year, so a really good home team. They scored the 8th most points last year in the NFL, the 4th most in the AFC, and then they had the 3rd best uh, points scored versus points against differential in the whole entire league last year at 149. So, you know, Mike Tomlin, former Vikes D coordinator, he likes his defense, and they also added not not too many big additions for this team. They had Vance McDonald, who was a tight end. I think he was on the Niners last year, and then Joe Hayden. Former yeah, solid cornerback. Elite corner who is now, again, kind of got the older guy syndrome at the cornerback position. But, hey, if Terrence Newman's still kicking at 40, Joe Hayden at, I think, what, 28, 29, somewhere around there. Yeah, could still good. be a good player. The Ravens, let's move down the list. So I, I so for these teams, I looked up kind of the rosters and looked up their pages. Apparently, John Harbaugh called rookie soft and then obviously espn's like okay we got to get bad boy nick saban on tv and see what he has to say about this and he basically ripped harbaugh a new one which was absolutely hilarious here's the interesting thing though rick this team drafts lamar jackson why they sign rg3 yeah it's I don't very apparent that. they want to go to you know maybe a spread style where they can get those guys in the shotgun make some moves get them out of the pocket maybe get some rushing yards and apparently Joe Flacco's in the yeah. best shape of his life to do this offense as well. Um, is this basically a, a a coup by the Ravens to to make Joe Flacco so unhappy they're going to stop feeding this guy breakfast so he'll just leave and then these speedy dudes can take over? Yeah, I, I think that they were trying to get 
some bang for their buck. They're saying, hey, you know, RG3 could make a comeback, and Lamar Jackson is basically RG3 uh, uh-huh. in the – in 2018 so let's try to put them together on a cheap way possible and see if we can maybe get like a a steal or an undercover like big pick and have a breakout season with these guys i don't think anything's gonna happen you have joe flacco that he's your quarterback he took you to a super bowl just a few years back i i don't know why they drafted lamar jackson and it doesn't make any sense no, I'm kind of with you, but what I will say is they really overloaded the offense this year. So their first round pick was Hayden Hurst, who is seen as the best college tight end. He's coming out of South Carolina, really good player. And then they signed Michael Crabtree, John Brown, and Willie Sneed too, that burner from the Saints. And so they really did give Flacco a chance this year. You would think if he can get Kevin at the Super Bowl, he'd make around 30 mil a year per year. But they actually have some dudes, and obviously Trell Suggs is like 60 years old and still just jacked and killing people, and so he's still on the team. Ravens are interesting. I don't know. I, they have some talent, and that's just one of those weird teams that can just show up. Yeah, but so, Joe Flacco's been bad the last few seasons. Um, I, so I like are they pri- are they trying to pressure Joe Flacco into playing better because Lamar Jackson and RG3 are on the team now? I I, I yeah I, don't get I think. It. It, I think it's a ploy. I think it's one of those things where it's, hey, Joe, look, we gave you all these guys and you still sucked. Okay, we're going to bench you. It's They win either way. If Flacco plays well, it's okay, good. Like our big contract quarterback's playing well, we're going to keep him. But if he doesn't, I think it gives them an excuse or a reason to then maybe try out a Lamar Jackson or an RG3. So we'll see what happens there. The Bengals, 7-9 last year. They didn't even score 300 points, which is not good. Jeremy Hill is gone, and so now all of a sudden you're hearing whispers of Joe Mixon. We got a little bit of a bell cow back syndrome here, Rick, for fantasy. Joe Mixon, he could be a really good player this year. Might have to draft that guy. Uh, Yeah, the Bengals running backs, though, in the last how many seasons have been disappointing? Ever ever since uh, the Bears gave him Cedric Benson back in, like, 2010. That's a great call, though. Guy out of Texas. I love Cedric Benson. Um, this team's also interesting. They signed Brandon LaFell, and they get uh, Efert back, the really good tall tight end as well. They got A.J. Green, one of the best in the league when he's healthy. And then they drafted yeah, but John Ross. Yeah, the ball? That's... Uh, Andy, so Andy Dalton's still this quarterback. His best year ever was in 2013 when he threw for 33 touchdowns. And people remember the 33 touchdowns. They don't remember the 20 interceptions he also had that year. And then since 2013, he's thrown 19 touchdowns, 25, 18, and then last year, 25. Those were in order in years since 2013. And and not a bunch of interceptions. I think he had single digits three of those years. But another quarterback that's really just on this hot seat, he's just average. You know, an average yeah. just doesn't get you anywhere. No, uh, that's why the Vikings and, got rid of uh, Case Keenum, right? Yeah, I mean, I think they kind of thought that it was lightning in the bottle and not necessarily something that could have been consistent. And But the other thing, too, Rick, is they trade A.J. McCarron, that backup, to Buffalo, where you got Josh Allen, too. So they're really kind of rolling the dice all in on this uh, Dalton yeah. guy. So we'll see well, what he does. I don't know. A.J. McCarron, I believe he had a start last year, a start or two. Uh, yeah, yeah no, some, I, I'm pretty sure he had some Dalton playing time. And, uh, it, and he was kind of disappointing, uh, A.J. Mm-hmm. McCarron was. So... Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, he, he was big for Alabama when they won the national championship. I know. But, and he was dating yeah, Miss Alabama, college. too. His girl was a smoke back then. My goodness, I wonder if he's still with her. We'll get back to you on that, maybe next week. Um, last but certainly not least, we got the Browns. They they went zero burger again last year. I don't anticipate that again this year. They did have the worst points for versus points against differential at minus 176 last year. That comes out to about losing on average by 11 points per game. So they bad just, in the NFL. It's, ver- it's very awful. They have they have a Baker's dozen at quarterback, Baker Mayfield, who they just signed for four years, thirty two point five million. Rick, that's about thirty two point five more million than we have. Are you going with him if he shows you something in training camp as well as the preseason, or are you going with Tyrod? What would you do? 